This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on Shiksha Parv, Use of Technology and Role of Vocational Learning in School Education. The participants are Dr. Jyoti Gupta, Educationalist, and Urmi Goswami, Journalist. We are in the middle of Shiksha Parv, which is a fortnight from September 8th to 25th which felicitates teachers as conversation on how to take the new national education policy, the one announced just recently, new forward. And we are also focusing on the new areas. It is a NEP break new ground. And one of those areas where new ground is being broken is in vocational learning and the use of technology. Dr. Gupta, when we are talking about vocational learning, the National Education Policy 2020 actually makes a sea change in how it views vocational education. How do you see that implementation from the way it used to be to how the NEP visualizes it as mainstream? How do you see the implementation happening? What do you see are the big challenges? See, the vocational education has been here for a long time. The skill subjects had been introduced by CBSC since quite a few years, but the problem was that the industry linkages were not there. And also, a career path was not defined for the children. Also, it was taken as a separate stream. So, somewhere it was that the academic subjects are more important and that they are given more importance. But now, when they are talking about an equal importance to be given to the skill subjects as the academic subjects, and also these skill subjects are going to be introduced right from class 6 onwards. So the children are going to already come prepared that the uh, skill subjects or the vocational education is as important as the academic subjects are. And also there's going to be a cross-linkage of the industries and it is going to be also taken up in the higher education as well. So I think it would be a welcome move to have a skill university also. And somewhere the NEP is talking about all this. So the implementation of skill education is going to be a more dynamic. It's going to be robust. And also it is going to be across all the spectrums, I would say. You're right, when when you look at plans, it is very clear that they're looking at getting skill education or vocational learning into the curriculum at a pretty early level, you know, between six and uh, class six and eight, where it's more craft-based, so it's like fun learning, so to speak. And then when you go into the higher classes, then it takes on a little bit more sort of form and shape. And as you mentioned rightly, that there is now a pathway to higher education. Do you think that would go a long way in taking away the stigma that has been associated with vocational education? Do you think that was the stigma which was always there? And this is where, you know, our country was not able to implement it in its true spirit. Whereas if you look at countries abroad, it has always been that the vocational education there is equally important as is the academic education. So I think now when the children will be able to take up courses like banking, insurance, AI, a lot of technology-based courses are there, there's hotel management, a lot of courses in medical, beauty, etc. So now the children, when they will grow up knowing that they have to take one or two subjects that are skill subjects, then they will give equal importance to it. What is the point of doing something in vocational education after you've completed your BA Arts or BCom and then you come into something in beauty or you come into something in healthcare? So now the children won't be wasting their time doing something that they really don't want to create a profession in. So Hmm. for example, design thinking. So there is a lot that is there to offer in design thinking where the children start thinking about creating projects around carpentry, around other designs. So why should animation there or creating storyboards, etc. is there? So why should a child do something like BA Arts or BCom and then finally think, okay, this is not what I want to do. I want to do something in artificial intelligence. I want to learn our language and do data mining there. So why can't the children do it while they're still in school? And, for example, the library sciences are there or there are courses around ECCE. Today, if you want to become a teacher of ECCE, the new qualifications also talk about the teacher having done or passed class 12. And then if you're doing it as a skill subject, you can directly go into teaching. 
and you can keep completing your graduation and your post graduation side by side so mm-hmm. children have an option of uh, doing a couple of years then coming back doing your degree again and you can take a break and you can try your hands at certain things figure out if this is what you want to do and this is what you would like to do for the rest of your life so it kinds of you know gives a broad spectrum i would say cross continuation as well so really this is huge shift now the question really is do we have the the capacity the teacher capacity the training capacity to give voice to this idea because it's a new side for the students but it's also new for the teaching community will we be able to meet up to this requirement we will be because at the end of the day it is the same teachers who are going to be trained for these vocational courses there are some specialized teachers those who would be required from outside but the nep is also talking about having the experts on board so they very clearly say that for uh, even the subjects that are you know art integrated or sports integrated or even they are talking about agriculture coming in they are talking about health coming in so lot of people from the community and a lot of special coaches from the community will also be taking so it's very clearly mentioned in the nep but having said that i would also say like for example courses like banking insurance courses like for the markets as well so mm. the commerce teachers are equipped enough to handle these questions these subjects or so economic teachers can handle subjects like entrepreneurship etc so biotech teachers can take up health courses the librarians in the school can take up the library courses all the teachers who have done mh they can also look at teaching the ecc e courses so english teachers are able to do the communication courses or the mass media courses so it is a matter of training so right now the teachers are taking up the syllabus or the content that is designed for the subjects that they are teaching but at their own graduation and their post graduation level they've done a lot of papers which are going to come handy right now with the skill subject for many of the profession lines or sort of streams that you were talking about these are streams that people wouldn't have thought about in terms of vocational learning so clearly it's a new paradigm but there is another aspect to it and it's interesting that you mentioned training and that is the use of technology clearly we are getting to a place where technology has to be used much more and past few months because of covid-19 we have realized the importance that technology plays and i'm wondering how do we address the question of digital divide so here there is a matter of equity i think and at the end of the day there was this survey that ncert had done a couple of weeks back where there were about 33% of the children who were without any devices now here i would say that every household in the country has a mobile phone and whether it is the smartphone or it is the tablets they are very very cheap these days also the big companies they can procure the devices that have been dumped by the companies because they've gone ahead and they have kind of launched the new version so mm. these can be procured and they can be given to the children because the internet is not expensive today and platforms like diksha which mm. the mhrd has started and there is so much for the children there mm. is so much for the teachers there and the entire set of books have been energized so the children don't have to buy the books anymore if they have a device they can simply by one click download and so to say it needs a lot of planning at this point of time that how these children who do not have the access to technology per se like this we can also plan and get the technology to them the nep talks about the use of technology and obviously we live in an age where you cannot turn away from technology and covid has shown us how critical technology is do you see that it would be possible to regain a balance where we combine the use of technology and in person not only learning but relations because it somehow we seem to have been pushed to the other end not by design but by default and i'm wondering what that means as an educator so it's already here we can't debate or deny it 
the importance of technology in our lives is there till now we would tell the kids don't get phones to the school do not get connected to the world outside while you are studying or whatever but now everything is happening in technology somewhere that human touch the social and the emotional balance is right now a little disbalanced but there's a very thin line that we all have to manage and balance at this point of time so denying technology to the children is not going to be the way but the new skill that we have to teach to the children and to the people is a balance between the human relationships the social and the emotional connect with the school with the teachers with the peers with the parents with the friends and at the same time taking the best out of technology so how much technology is enough technology or is good technology is still have to be defined and not just this the responsible usage of technology is also very important there's so much of artificial intelligence that is built into the technology today so the choice of seeing the content is not alone with the child or with the person there is so much that is being suggested through the artificial intelligence in the form of content so we have to really teach the children as to how to responsibly use technology how to tackle the technology how to look at the different threats that are there of technology the national education policy 2020 in terms of use of technology also speaks about creating the national educational technology forum for free exchange of ideas to enhance the use of technology not just in in curriculum and learning but actually in planning and administration of school yes. how do you see this as a game changer because for the past few years we have been talking in terms of quality in our schooling as a general concept across the board and i'm wondering how do you see forum like this and technology being possibly an instrument or a mechanism that can help address our quality issues see in this shiksha par we've been seeing a lot of states come forward and showcase the wonderful work that they are doing there's a lot of good work that is being done in the private space also so having forums like this is going to bring in best practices and one of the examples that i was sharing with you is diksha platform it is for the teachers it is for the students all kind of technology can be taken from a platform like that so if you have a forum where everybody is sharing the resources then you can see that you do not have to reinvent the wheel again and again you hmm. can go see what are the best practices adapt adopt take it change it so there is a lot of learning there and for the administrative purposes i think the way the schools function monitoring of uh, certain processes feedback mechanisms assessments like nep is also talking about having the report cards for the children that are holistic report cards a 360 degree development of the child so you can do the tracking of the child right when the child is 3 years to 18 years and it's not just the academic tracking you can do the health tracking also which later on will be again very helpful for policies that uh, ayushman bharat is making so there is a lot that can be done there will be so much of data for everybody to understand draw the patterns from and see as to how do you come back and implement everything erps are there the parents can see what is happening in the classroom the higher ups can see what is going on in the classroom how the teachers are teaching whether the learning outcomes are being achieved or not so through technology all this is possible so right now it is that we have uh, so many teachers short in certain states but if everything is on technology you get the real time numbers how many teachers taught whether the children had the class or not whether they finished the syllabus that they were supposed to whether the learning outcomes have been achieved or not so technology makes it so much easier and transparent Dr. Gupta, thank you so much for speaking to us and actually taking us through transformational changes that have been suggested in the national education policy, but unfortunately often overlooked in general conversation, and particularly on both these issues of vocational learning and the use of technology. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on Shiksha Parv, Use of Technology and Role of Vocational Learning in School Education. The participants were Dr. Jyoti Gupta, educationalist, and Urmi Goswami, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. 
You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsttalks at gmail.com.